folks, it's Jell. Sorry, it's been a while. I've kind of got finals coming up, so I'm doing a bunch of things there. But I've got a minute, so let's talk about divisive games that aren't called the Division. And what is more divisive than Star Fox Zero? Oh my crap! This is the worst rated Star Fox game ever. It is getting absolutely slammed by a lot of reviewers. And then you have a couple people who are like, the game is brilliant, you get used to the controls. Some are even saying, like, uh, the completions, he's like, this is better than Star Fox 64, which absolutely blows my mind. And me, I'm having Sonic flashbacks. Like, I've just realized Star Fox is the Nintendo equivalent of Sonic. I, uh, I don't necessarily mean that in a negative way, let me explain. You see, in the case of Sonic, and the case of Star Fox, they released, like, one or two games that were just absolute legends. Then there was a huge gap of time between that and the next proper release in the series, in that time, the industry changed a whole lot, and so they tried to modernize it with increased gameplay variety because they were suddenly unsure of their classic gameplay. In the case of Sonic, you know, that's that gap between, like, Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic Adventure, and with Star Fox, it's the gap between 64 and Assault. Yes, Adventures happened, but Adventures doesn't count. It was literally... Like, half the reason they were like, yo, you know it was Dinosaur Planet, it wasn't a Star Fox game. They made it a Star Fox game to try to fill the gap between 64 and Assault, because Assault was taking so long. And the reason Assault was a mess was, yeah, by when that game came out, on-rails became a bad word, and so they tried to make the game more off-rails, more all-range mode, and that, in general, hurt the game, because people were buying games based on if they had free roaming. People go into GameStop and ask, does this game have free roaming? <laughs> and yeah, I think Zero is a little bit of that. But, as someone who has played the entire series and nearly beaten the entire series, the only ones they haven't beaten are the Super Nintendo game um, and Adventures. I'm not beating Adventures, okay? As someone who has played all these games and actually loves Assault and thinks it's criminally underrated, I'll be honest, Star Fox Zero is flawed. But it is the second best Star Fox game, in spite of its low score. I hate to say it, uh, yo, because I love Assault. And the fact that Assault actually progressed the plot, it has way better writing and voice acting than Zero, gives me... It makes me respect it a little bit more. But from a pure gameplay standpoint, Star Fox Zero is, like, undeniably better than Assault. Unless you want multiple. Yo, know, it's undeniably better than Assault. It's undeniably better than Command. I will even go so far as to say it is better than Star Fox on the SNES, but I think Star Fox on the SNES is rather overrated. Have you played it recently? The movement window is super small. You don't have a targeting reticle, and it's hard to hit things. I mean, it was, it was great at the time, but it's, it's still kind of fun, but it's, it has flaws, okay? It, it's not as good as you remember it being is what I'm trying to say. So yes, I I actually like Star Fox Zero. It was a really good game up until the boss of Titania, which if you read between the lines in all the reviews, that's where everyone got angry. I actually watched a bunch of people like streaming the game, and there were people who were really loving it up until the boss of Titania. That is where the quality of the game takes an absolute nosedive. Now, I will explain that in a minute, but let's answer the questions. Are the motion controls required? Yes. Will they ever patch in a way to turn them off? No. They are like, the game is designed around using uh, tilt controls and two screens. That That's the way it's built. Because, like, the idea was, like, they were realizing they made this console, they made the Wii U with this goofy feature of, oh, you can tilt the controller, it has two screens and a touch screen. They realized no one made any games that actually utilized that. It actually kind of became the Achilles heel of the uh, of the Wii U. You made this system that's supposed to use these two screens, and no one is using the two screens. So they were like, we, you know, they know they're wrapping up the Wii U, and they're like, we gotta do one game that actually takes advantage of the Wii U's weird capabilities. So they made their one game that actually takes advantage of the Wii U's weird capabilities. So let's answer the, the question, is the motion control really that bad? No. If you've played Splatoon, it's very close to that. The only difference is that you're actually going to be using the X-axis. You're actually going to be trying to aim left and right, as well as up and down. When I play Splatoon, I only use the tilt controls to aim up and down. And 
yeah, I think the x-axis could use to be a little bit more sensitive, which would be a great thing to put in an options menu if you had an options menu. This isn't just a Star Fox Zero thing. There are, like, no first-party Wii U games that have a freaking options menu. It's been driving me nuts because of sound balance, which Star Fox Zero has a very definite problem with. You see, the voices and sound effects come out of the gamepad, and then the music and sound effect comes out of your TV. See, the problem sound effects come out both, and the pew-pew sounds coming out of that little speaker makes them way too loud, so I can't appreciate the phenomenal freaking soundtrack in this game. Drives me nuts. I wish I could turn down the volume on that. But in general, I did not find the motion controls to be that bad. You've probably heard that you can't aim with, like, the main screen reticle. You have to use the gamepad. That's... And that it's because the camera is skewed? Not really. When it comes to rail shooters, you usually want to have really big bullets at really big hitboxes. And Star Fox 64 had that. Zero doesn't, though, because they're like, hey, wait a second, you can use the gamepad to have way more precise aiming... So let's make the bullets and hitboxes smaller in order to make you, like, actually utilize that aiming to counterbalance it. And the result is that the more accurate controls have resulted in less accurate shooting. Not through any fault of the controls. The one real technical problem with the controls is the fact that if you want to shoot straight ahead, you have to tap Y. Which is, of course your recalibrate button. You've probably heard a bunch of people complaining about how often you have to recalibrate. And it is true. Like, if you... When you aim with that thing and you're going left or right and stuff, you can't really return it to the center. Uh, don't try. Like, I... Like, the Wii U... It's funny. Like, a friend... I was watching a friend of mine play it and he was getting really angry at it. I thought something was wrong with his controller, so I was Googling up a storm. Freaking Shigeru Miyamoto outright admitted prior to the Wii U's launch, that the gamepad was made of cheap parts, because this was an issue they were having before launch. They are just like, yeah, no, we just have to find a way to work around that as game designers. Which is so not the way you want to design your controller, but whatever. Yes, the Wii U gamepad is made of cheap parts. It will get decalibrated, and you have to constantly recalibrate it. Yes, this isn't a thing that should happen. However, it's no worse than the camera in PSO. I know that sounds like a weird thing, but hear me out. If you've ever played Fantasy Star Online, you know that you're constantly tapping that left trigger to recenter your camera. And pretty soon, it's not even an issue. Like, it becomes second nature to just... You know, I can't see. I just, you know, I tap the left trigger. It is the exact same way. Like, I started doing it automatically. Oh, I want to shoot straight ahead, I tap Y. It didn't even... I didn't even freaking notice it anymore. So when it started happening to a friend of mine, he was getting frustrated, I was confused. I didn't know my controller also got decalibrated because it actually became too natural to me. Then again, I'm kind of the shit control whisperer. Like, I know I get really, really picky about stiff and unresponsive controls, but you give me a weird control scheme and chances are I will learn it. And I... Like, here's the thing. I think most reviewers kind of have motion control PTSD. Because let's be real here, between the Wii and the Kinect and a couple of really bad move games, the there weren't a lot of... Most games that tried to use motion control did so very poorly. I actually tried to do a top 10 motion control games list as a potential episode. It's not a very good list. I'm gonna be real with you here. It's not a very good list. No one really made good use of motion control. Especially because the Wiimote was a busted piece of crap. And I've realized, yo, know, I've probably played more Wii games than anyone else on the planet. I'm serious. Because I was trying to find a game with good motion controls. And so I've played a lot of really crappy ones. A funny story, I remember I was planning a review. I think it was for Mario Strikers Charge or something. Some game that had really crappy use of motion control. And I described it as being like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Eventually, I got used to the controls, and I still thought they were bad, but I got used to them. And I was going to put in the review, yo, but you get used to them. And I was like, wait a second. And sure enough, I can pat my head and rub my stomach at the same time now. I couldn't do that, and trust me, I checked. I couldn't do that before I owned a Wii. Bad Wii controls taught me how to pat my head and rub my stomach at the same time. 
So as someone who can pat their head and rub their stomach at the same time, I can safely say that Star Fox Zero's controls were something I got used to really, really quickly, but I've also seen how poorly that can go, because I remember when I was trying to let my mother play uh, Splatoon, and she's very much from the NES era, Mario 2 is like her favorite game, and so she, I realized she hadn't really played any games that used two analog sticks. Trying to explain that you control the camera with that right analog stick was nearly impossible, and then I realized, not only am I trying to explain to her to use that right analog stick, but the motion control was a third analog stick. She was having, yo, she is used to having a D-pad and two buttons, and here she is trying to work three analog sticks at once. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't particularly go well. I could see some people are just plain motion control impaired. Like, they just can't. While others, they just rage at the words motion control. Like, seriously, I remember when Splatoon came out. I watched a bunch of people play it, and the moment they saw they had to tilt the control, they are like, oh, geez, how do I turn this off? Like, they didn't even really give it a chance. There's a ton of people who just, they were just, no. And I think that's a problem with Star Fox Zero. The game starts up. It does this little tutorial segment. They're like, wait a second. I have to tilt the controller. No. How do I turn this off? And then they realize they can't turn it off. And then they just rage. And it puts them in a salty mood for the rest of the game. And they just start complaining about it. Now, let's answer the better question. Does it actually improve the game? Is there any point to this? And this is where things get tricky, because the rail shooting, thanks to the smaller hitbox, it is actually hurt a little bit by the motion control. Not enough to tank it, but enough for me to say that it's not actually better than the rail shooting segments in Assault. It comes, it's really good. You have a huge movement window, there's lots of nice branching paths, they throw a good amount of enemies at you. But, the, um, the smaller hitboxes on the bullets does make it a little harder to hit things. Not as hard as trying to hit things in Star Fox on the SNES, mind you. But, it's, uh, it's still a little bit of an issue. Now, the all range mode segments, on the other hand. This is very important. I hate all range mode. It is the worst part of Star Fox 64. Those parts suck. It's a little better in Assault, but I still don't really like all range mode. I don't just mean in Star Fox. I mean the entire genre. I have tried so hard to get into Ace Combat. I hate Ace Combat. And I want to. You know how much I like Reiko Nagase, right? You know, the Ridge Racer girl? You realize her little sister, K Nagase, is actually an important character in the Ace Combat series, right? Like, she's... She's been in it for a while, technically, since the first game she's been hiding there. And she's like the central focus of Ace Combat 5. I tried so hard to get into Ace Combat 5. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I hate the entire free-flying space shooter genre. I don't like these games. The only games in the genre I like are like Sky Gunner and Macross 30. Even then... I'm not really that big of a fan. I will be honest, I know a lot of people really like fighting Star Wolf. I don't like fighting Star Wolf. I find them to be really, really aggravating in 64, and they're a little better in Assault, but not by much. I don't like fighting them. I love fighting them in Star Fox Zero. That's the best part of the game. I wish the whole thing was fighting Star Wolf. For the first time in Star Fox history... I actually like the off-rail stages. This is some of the best all-range mode I've ever experienced. And it's because of the motion controls. Well, kind of. What, more what the motion controls actually allow you to do. You see, what happens is, when you're normally flying along and you see two enemies, normally you would have to pick one and chase after it. You shoot one enemy at a time. Not anymore. You can shoot off-center. You see two enemies, you can point your reticle at one, shoot at it, point your reticle at the other, shoot at that. It's especially good with the charge shot, because it's like, charge shot, boom, this guy, fly to that guy, chase. 
feels great, but what's even better is target camera, which is a little like Sky Gunner. I love it. What it does, it fixes one of my biggest problems with the genre, which is, well, I've mentioned that I have a terrible sense of direction, right? I get lost in all range mode. Like, yo, the enemy will evade me, and then I'm just spinning around trying to figure out where the heck did they go? I can't find them. Not a problem anymore. I hit the lock-on button, and it switches to this goofy target view that gives me a great sense of where they are in space in relation to me. But it's kind of awkward to fly your ship with that camera. So you just look down at your gamepad where you have your first-person cockpit view, which is super easy to fly your ship in. So you're glancing between your lock-on view and your gamepad view and using the two in tandem, constantly switching between them you get a way better sense of where your opponent is in space, and the result is the best Star Wolf duels in series history, <laughs> which they realize. This game has more Star Wolf duels than ever, because there's secret paths you can take <laughs> where you get to do, like, special, like, super-powered one-on-one -on -one duels with the individual Star Wolf members, and each one has their own special attack they only use in these fights. Like, when you fight Star Wolf... Uh, Wolf himself. Uh, when when you fight Wolf, he does the uh, he does the move uh, Lightning Fang or Lightning Tornado, where he, he like does cannon drill at you with lightning everywhere. Pigma apparently has the Pigma Bomb. Andrew has the Andrew Shield. I have no clue what Leon does, but I'm sure it's freaking amazing. And that's just, like they have special moves now. That's it's great. It's the freaking best. Like, they actually made all range mode enjoyable to me now, which makes the lack of online multiplayer or really any sort of competitive multiplayer an absolute crime. I want to fight people with these controls. I want to fight people with these controls badly, especially with the chicken walker. Oh, you have no clue. I have wanted the Chicken Walker since Star Fox 2 was cancelled. Because here's the thing, I didn't really care about Star Fox until 64. I had Star Fox on the I didn't think it was a big deal. I cared about Star Fox 2 entirely because you could turn the R-Wing into Walker mode. I have bitched for almost every game that they don't turn into Walker mode. I say, I wish they'd bring back Walker mode. Why is there no Walker mode? They finally brought me my Walker mode. It is amazing. I love flipping and hovering with it. My favorite part of the game is Sector Alpha. <laughs> Sector Alpha is a stage ripped straight out of Star Fox 2. It's the second stage in the game. In Star Fox Zero, it's the second stage. In Star Fox 2, it's floating around, uh... <laughs> it's floating around right outside Venom. Basically, in Star Fox 2, there's this one big battle cruiser outside Venom, and it's the closest that game ever gets to an on-rail stage. Here, what Sector Alpha is, is you... You have this nice little rail shooter segment through an enemy armada, and then you fly into the ship, and it's the same ship from Star Fox 2, turn into a walker, and you run around inside the ship, get to the core, and blow it up, just like in Star Fox 2. <laughs> Favorite part of the whole game. I absolutely love it. That stage is phenomenal. It's great, it's great, it's great. So why does it fall apart at Titania? Well, the boss of Titania is the first actual boss in the game halfway through. Now, you would think that would be the problem. It takes them halfway through to get to the first boss. No, the problem is that the bosses in this game suck. Oh my crap, like, there are bosses earlier, but, like, they don't count. It's like, okay, here's a thing where you destroy the target and it goes boom, or you duel Star Wolf, or you get on the back of a Gigarilla and hit the panel, you know, they're, they're not really boss battles, but... The Scrap Worm is the first Here's a Giant monster you fight. And it sucks. Basically, what you have to do is you have to shoot these little red balls on it in order to open up its mouth so you can shoot at it. That doesn't sound too bad, except when its mouth is open, it doesn't actually open its open mouth nearly enough. You have to do this big song and dance to make it vulnerable. Then you're waiting around. It's only vulnerable for a brief amount of time, and then it farts around and does a bunch of crap and regenerates its red balls. It's even worse if Ficina, like, if, if you notice a review complaining about the Landmaster, guess what? Use the Landmaster in Titania and Ficina. 
the Landmaster usage is where the game goes wrong. And it's not really the fault of the vehicle itself. Mind you, I'd rather use Chicken Walker by a very large margin, but it's not actually the Landmaster's fault. It's the fact the Landmaster is associated with the worst stages in the game. Facina is awful. That's not where you do a wolf. That's an alternate path. Rather, they bring back the Stage 2 boss from, uh, from Star Fox Assault. You know, I sent you a Landmaster. That guy. They made a worse version of that. And you fight that on Facina, and it sucks. And the main reason these suck is because Star Fox stages are super short. Most of these stages are like three minutes long, five minutes long. Then you get to these bosses, and they the issues are you have to do a big song and dance in order to make them vulnerable. They're only vulnerable for a very brief amount of time, and some of them have a just get just an awful get off me attack, which does way too much damage and leaves you open for more damage, and what happens is that these boss battles turn into these, like, half-hour-long battles of attrition. Now, I want you to think about that. Three-minute stage, 30-minute boss battle. That's the problem. The problem is in pacing. Like, you hear people complain about Zone S? Guess what? The Gyro Wing? Easiest vehicle to control in the game. Stage is fine. If it was a one-shot linear game, stage be great. It's There's no issue with it. It's just like a slow, laid-back stage. The issue is you go back, you play arcade mode, and you're going through all these super short, three-minute long stages, especially because that's, like, really early on when the bosses aren't being annoying. You know, you go through these super short, like, three- to five-minute long stages, and then you get to this friggin' 15-, 20-minute long slow stage it's not bad. It just doesn't fit with the rest of the game, and it happens so early, so... You know, you're having fun, you're having a blast, it's all super fast-paced, and then it just slows to a crawl for this one stage. And then you get through that, and you're having fun, it's super fast-paced, and then you get to the end of Titania, and... Ah! Uh, yeah. It, uh... It sucks pretty bad, and it's funny because they put a lot of effort into the bosses. A lot of them have multiple ways you can beat them, but they they just suck. And ironically, like I know a lot of people are like, wait, the game's only like three hours long? How does that compare to the other Star Fox games? Oh, this is one of the longer ones! This is actually, like, there are more stages here. There are 20 stages total. That's more stages than Star than any other Star Fox. The issue is that it lacks... The pacing is so bad. There are sections that are so long that it makes you not want to replay the game. Ironically, the game is too short because it's too long. If that makes any sense. The, these weird, overly lengthy parts... There's just some really dumb pacing issues, especially with Venom. Because, <laughs> like, when you when you get to Venom, you have to sit through this big, long conversation where you can't do anything. And then you have to do this dumb, like, run around on the surface, do hit a button thing before, like, the actual fighting begins. And it doesn't ruin the game, but it's like, do you not know how pacing works? Like, it is almost an arcade game, and then it just has these weird slow spots. <laughs> but what sucks is that it is lacking replay value, because while there's a bunch of different paths you can take, number one, you can't take them initially. You have to, like, unlock abilities in order to take the alternate paths. So that almost defeats the purpose. Like, the first time you play through, you're going to take, like one path through the game. But after after you beat it, here's the thing. All the different alternate paths, they all lead to Sector Omega, Corneria 2, Venom. And it's always the same Venom. Always the same Andros. 
always the same ending. Star Fox 64 had multiple paths you could take, leading to different Venoms at different bosses and different endings. And that was the big difference. Star Fox 64 was meaty because you sat down, you played it in a single sitting, and yeah, it was only like an hour and a half, two hours long, but you'd want to do it again. Because the stages were so fast-paced and fun, and you knew if you played differently, you could branch paths, see different stages, and get to a different ending. That's what made Star Fox 64 good, and Star Fox Zero lacks that. Also, one other problem with Star Fox Zero, you know that lock-on camera I mentioned? It's great when you can control it, but there are times where the game will automatically... It'll automatically switch to lock-on camera and you can't get rid of it. And those parts suck. Like, I get the first one. When it happens on the first boss, I get it. It's a way of slapping you and saying, hey, you've got a gamepad screen. Use it. And I'm okay with that one. But it keeps happening. And it just, it throws a lot of, it throws a lot of people off. And it especially hurts the co-op mode. By the way, practically every complaint I had is alleviated in co-op mode. Those bosses are a lot less annoying when you're playing in co-op mode. Co-op mode is amazing, by the way. <laughs> what it is, is one person uses a pro controller to fly the R-Wing, and they get to shoot little weak pew-pew lasers. And the other player tilts around with the gamepad, and they get the proper lasers and the bombs and the charge shots. And it is an absolute blast. Especially because... The gamepad player is looking at their gamepad, and they have a completely different view of the action, but their view is interacting with the main game. It's super fun and cool! And it feels really tacked on, because, like, you have to, like, in your first playthrough, you have to start a stage, exit out, then re-enter it in co-op mode to play it in co-op. You cannot co-op through arcade mode. Player one, the one who gets to use the actual menus, is the one who winds up being the gunner, which makes no sense. And it still does the lock-on views, except now one of the players doesn't have the gamepad view, and so they're having a very hard time flying. It was very clearly tacked on. It's funny because it completely makes the game. Like, if you have someone you could play couch co-op with, absolutely get Star Fox Zero. Like, all the complaints, they vanish. Star Fox Zero is amazing couch co-op. But, like, non-couch co-op, it gets it gets lippy. And wow, I've spent this entire time, this has been 30 minutes of nothing but Star Fox Zero. Almost 30 minutes. But yeah, no, there's a lot to say. I like the game. But it is very clearly flawed. It's very, very clearly rushed to, you know, get one more game out on the Wii U. And that's been really weird, by the way. This past year of Wii U games, they've all been really rushed and wonky. I mean, did you play Mario Tennis Ultra Smash? The game plays great, but it only has one stage and no modes. Yeah, ser seriously, and people, people bashed it pretty hard. There have been a lot of surprisingly rushed Nintendo games, and rushed Nintendo games are weird, because they're still, like, really polished, but they're lacking just the dumbest features. It's been bizarre. So, yeah, Star Fox Zero, in spite of its delay, was very, very clearly rushed, and it's a shame... Because it's a, it's a pretty good game. Like, it's still one of the better Star Foxes. And that's part of why it reminds me of Sonic. The game is getting bashed, and people are treating it like it's just one of the worst things ever. And I get some of the complaints, but it's like, even though this is the lowest-rated Star Fox game of all time, it is one of the... It's the second-best one. Just unquestionably, it's better than Assault, it's better than Command, it's better than Adventures, it's better than the Super Nintendo game, and yes, I'll say it's better than Star Fox 2, or at least the build that we have of Star Fox 2. 
it, it's very bizarre. But yeah, no, I like the game. I I very much I like the game, but it is very flawed. Now, there's two reviews that I want to call out. One is, of course, Jim Sterling's. The other is Giant Bombs. I mean, Polygon's a bunch of pussies for not being able to play past the halfway point, but like I said, that's Titania. I totally get where they were going with that. And I find it funny because it reminds me of when Joystick refused to review Nier because of that one weird fishing quest. Anyway, Jim Sterling, funniest thing. I agree with his Jimquisition on it. Like, him saying that Nintendo needs to stop messing around and just make a normal Star Fox game instead of constantly trying to innovate, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Like, I, I think he really hit the nail on the head there, and I agree, and it's, it's I'm actually really happy because there's actual traction now. People are actually starting to demand a pure rail shooter, Star Fox. Like, in in the past, that would have never happened. But now, like, rail shooter's no longer a bad term. And people are like, you know what, Star Fox is one of the best rail shooters out there. Can you give us just a plain rail shooter? Because the rail shooter stages are the best part of the game. They're the day stage amidst the werehogs in Star Fox as a whole. All the Star Foxes are full of werehogs and... Rail shooter stages are the day stage. It's the same... It is the same thing. Like, the, even the fact that you go through them too fast, and that's why there aren't more of them. So I'm really happy to see that. Mind you, I still see people suggesting a bunch of other stupid crap. But I'm really happy to see people actually demanding pure rail shooter Star Fox. So why do I disagree with Jim Sterling's review... Well, really, it feels like he's just using it as a soapbox to complain about motion controls rather than actually learning them. Like, the fact that he says the chicken walker is the worst part of the game, I just find that weird. Because I felt the chicken walker was, like, the best part other than rail shooting. I love the chicken walker. I, I wish I could fight people with the chicken walker. But it's not that. No, no. The issue with Jim Sterling's review is that he contradicts himself super hard. In the Jimquisition, he outright, like, 100%, his review contradicts his Jimquisition. He outright says Nintendo needs to stop innovating. Uh, you know, trying to innovate, I should say. Because they, they need to just make plain Star Fox game. And he even says, you know, Nintendo said, freaking Shigeru Miyamoto said he wanted to put in these motion controls because otherwise it would just be yet another Star Fox game and he didn't want it to just be yet another Star Fox game. And Jim said, yeah, like there's so many of those floating around, right? I agree with that. There's really no replacement for Star Fox. But in his actual review, he repeatedly makes the point that Star Fox Zero is just another generic space shooter, and the only thing making it unique is the motion controls! He literally contradicts himself entirely! Ah! And that's my beef with the Giant Bomb review. The Giant Bomb review says, you know what, the problem isn't the motion control. The problem is that this game is outdated. They outright say... Yo, this game just, it doesn't feel like it belongs in this time period. If this came out ten years ago, we probably would have loved it. Number one, no! Because that's when Star Fox Assault came out, and y'all certainly didn't love that, so don't give me that shit. In fact, when Star Fox Assault came out, people had the same complaint. They said Star Fox Assault was outdated and would have been good ten years ago! Which I disagree with! Then again... I think modern game, like, if, if what you mean by this game should have come out 10 years ago, then we would have liked it, is because modern games are garbage, and this isn't a modern game, then I would agree with you. Because yes, I would rather play Star Fox Zero than a lot of modern games. But, I have a feeling that wasn't the point you're making. I hate, I hate that argument. It doesn't make any sense. Fun is fun. And what's being implied in both of these statements is that there's so many, like, better alternatives to Star Fox. Because you can't say Star Fox is outdated unless there's something that does Star Fox better. 
And I don't know anything that does Star Fox better. Like, the only things that even come closer... Like, and trust me, I've played Van Ark. I've played Space Debris. They're nice Star Fox clones, but they're not Star Fox. The only things that, like, come kind of close in terms of, like, pure all-range mode is Sky Gunner and Macross 30, and they're still not Star Fox. Having said that, I completely forgot about Colony Wars. What's about... To anyone who's still listening... What's the best Colony Wars? What's, which one should I go with? Because I'm going to go out and grab one, but there's three of them, and I don't know which one's actually the best. Whoa, my chair. Um, I, uh... Of course, anyone who knows anything about video games should know that the answer is never as easy as start with the first one or just play the most recent one. It could, it could go anyway. So if you want to tell me which Colony War has the best gameplay. Like, I know the third one doesn't have the branching story paths, but that's not what I'm concerned with. If it still has better gameplay, then I'm gonna go with that one. But otherwise, like, yeah, let me know if anyone here is familiar with Colony Wars and wants to recommend one to me, because I remember playing the demo and really liking it. I doubt it'll be really an alternative to Star Fox, but I do want to give it a spin, because Max was mentioning it on his Star Fox Zero stream, and I was like, oh yeah! I haven't played Colony Wars in eons. So I want to... I want to observe that, but that's the thing. You can't sit here and tell me that it's such a generic space shooter that it's so outdated when I can't think of a single alternative. And it's funny, because I posed I pose that question to a friend of mine. Because, like, I started talking about it, and he was like... And I said, but there's no alternative. And he's like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, really, name one. And, uh, yeah, he was stumped. He realized, wait a second, I don't know what's Star Fox, but better. Many have tried, all have failed, including Nintendo. <laughs> so, yo, don't, don't give me that crap. And that's, yo, and that's another part of why Star Fox kind of reminds me of Sonic. Even when Sonic games are bad, they're still a Sonic game, and no one else makes Sonic games but Sonic Team. Yo, that's why, yo, even Sonic 06 is, yo, still still Sonic game, a really bad one, but if you got that hankering for a Sonic game, there's, there's nothing else like it. That's why Sonic Boom is worse than Sonic 06, because it's not... It doesn't have the benefit of, uh, at least it's a Sonic game. No! no! Sonic Boom is not a Sonic game. It doesn't even feel remotely like a Sonic game. But yeah, same thing, same thing with Star Fox. It's... It has a unique feel to it that even a bad Star Fox game gets right. Usually. It... And no one else can. So, sort of where I'm at with Zero. So that doesn't answer the question, though, of... Should you buy it? Because I know there's a lot of people who are very confused. Let me make... Let me at least... Clear this up. Did you like Star Fox Assault? If you've never played Star Fox Assault, you should probably give it a chance, because it's the only true sequel the Star Fox series has ever actually seen! So, give Assault a chance. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty alright. Now, if your opinion of Assault is that it's complete garbage, and that it, it isn't fit to bear the Star Fox name, and it's trash, and you never want to play it again, it's just so awful, avoid Star Fox Zero like the play. You will hate this game. If your opinion of Star Fox Assault ranges anywhere from... It wasn't terrible, I guess. It wasn't that great to actually enjoying Star Fox Assault, then you might want to give Zero a chance. Unless you already know that you you just outright refuse to put up with motion control even if they even if it works kinda okay. Like if you're just like I can't do motion control, I just I hate them, then obviously don't touch it. And if you've never played a Star Fox game before in your life, Get 64 3D on your 3DS. If not that, like, emulate 64 or something. 
play Star Fox 64. It's the best of the series when people say Star Fox. They're talking about Star Fox 64. It's one of the greatest rail shooters ever made. It is phenomenal. Give it a play. It is much better than Star Fox Zero. But yeah, no, that's Star Fox Zero, and realizing that I've rambled this long on a single game, I think I will hold off talking about DOAX 3 and Devil's Third and the rest of the crew until another video. Anyway, thank you for listening to me rant about Star Fox Zero. This isn't, like, actually a review. I want to do a proper review, but looking back on it, it's probably going to take me a while because I got I to gotta finish up my math and get through my finals. As soon as finals are done, I'm going to head to Indiana to go help my grandmother out and also to earn some money because immediately after that, is uh, ASEN, you know, Anime Central Convention. So I'm gonna go to ASEN. And so, yeah, I'm probably not gonna be able to get a Star Fox Zero review out within the month. That's kind of not happening. So uh, this is your this is your pre-review. If you want to know the score, it's 3.9 out of five because it comes so close to being a four out of five. It comes so close to being just unquestionably good at something I would actively recommend. But it has so many little flaws and hiccups and blemishes and odd design choices and just little things that all drag it down, but not to the point of being terrible. Just to the point of it being weird. And again... This is the most divisive game, like, ever. There are people who just... Yeah, think that it is complete garbage. Like, just unplayable trash. And then there are people who think it's one of the greatest games they've ever played. It's... This is divisive. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this rant. See ya!